Yo, Arham. Hey, what's up? You wanna go grab some coffee after this? I mean, yeah, I would love to, but I'm actually fasting this Ramadan, you know? Oh yeah, I totally forgot, man. Sorry about that, but you can surely have some water, no? Well, actually, no. It's a full-fledged fast, so no water, no food. How do you do this, bro? Like, seriously? Well, that's a really good question, actually. Maybe I should try and answer that in a YouTube video. What's cooking, Sapiens? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Arham, and I'm a fourth-year medical student at the University of Oslo in Norway. On this channel, I share my life as a medical student here in Norway as well as other valuable stuff such as effective studying, productivity and calisthenics. So make sure you hit that subscribe button right now if you haven't done that already. So Ramadan is here which means that the majority of Muslims around the globe will be fasting from sunrise till sunset. And I live here in Norway which means that the that the days during summers are insanely long and hence the fasting hours lo can last like from anywhere between 18 to like 20 plus hours. And I think the longest I have fasted was around 21 hours a couple of years ago. And we all know for a fact that how medical school can be extremely challenging and demanding at times. So the real question is how am I or other Muslim medical students able to fast for such long hours during this period in medical school? So to answer this question, I won't be going into the health benefits of like intermittent fasting by like decreased inflammation, decreased cytokines, um, autophagies, and autophagy and all that stuff. However, I'll be breaking down my personal regime during Ramadan uh, into five major chunks and since time is the most precious thing in the world you will find all the timestamps in the description box below so you guys can skip through and watch exactly the parts that you want to watch now as i already mentioned that we muslims fast from dawn till dusk and that means that we have to wake up at least 30 minutes before um before sunrise in order to have some food before we can start our fast so for example if our if sunrise is at, is at let's say i don't know 4 30 in the morning then we have to wake up at least like half an hour before that, so 4 a.m. in the morning to have some food. And then we open our fast from anywhere between, let's say, 9 p.m. to 10 p.m., depending on whichever region you are in. When I tell this to my non-Muslim friends, the two most frequently asked questions I get is that firstly, can you drink water? And the answer is no, you can't. It's a full, like, full-fledged fast. And secondly, what exactly is your routine? How do you manage all this? I mean, how do you manage um, studying, sleep, uh, medical school, YouTube, work, and all that stuff? And the answer is actually quite simple. I don't have any routine. It's, it has to be flexible during Ramadan. So I don't have any rigid routine which I have to stick to every single day. Every single day. Allow me to explain this further. So for example, I have to wake up at 4 a.m. let's say in the morning to have some food before sunrise. And let's say after that, I have to wake up at let's say 7 in the morning to go to work or to go to the hospital for my clinical rotations or anything like that, right? So if I have, so if I have to wake up at 4 a.m. and then I have to and then I have some food, I have, do my morning prayer, and let's say I sleep at 5 a.m. and then I have to wait, w wake up after two hours. Then for me, there's absolutely no point in sleeping for two hours and then trying to wake up again after that. So instead, what I prefer to do is that I will stay awake after after having food, like 4 a.m. 4 a.m. in the morning, and I'll stay awake till like 7 a.m. and then go to work or to the hospital or wherever I have to go. So I try and utilize those two to three hours in the morning in the best possible manner by, for example, I don't know, researching for my YouTube videos or from by studying or anything, I don't know. But the point is there is no point in sleeping for those couple of hours if you have to wake up early. And on top of that, you have just eaten as well. So your energy levels are extremely high and it's much easier to um, reach your flow state during work because everybody else is sleeping, everything is quiet, your mobile is not, your phone's not ringing, no notifications, absolutely no disturbances so you can get into that flow state and get some and get a lot of work done during these couple of hours in the morning when everybody else when the entire world is basically sleeping however if i do not have any early morning commitments and uh, let's say i just have a few lectures on zoom from 8 a.m in the morning till like 12 p.m then for me there is no point in staying awake and in that case i will get back to sleep after having some food like at 4 or 4 30 a.m in the morning so being being flexible is the most important thing for me when it comes to Ramadan and at the same time I know people who like to stay up during the entire night and get all their work done during this eating window from sunset till sunrise and then they go back to sleep after that for me personally it has been more about being flexible and like if I feel like working after sunrise and I'll sit down and work for the for the next two three hours if I have any important early morning commitments if not then I'll just go back to sleep and watch those lecture recordings whenever I wake up 
So firstly, how exactly do I save a lot of time by fasting during Ramadan? So for me personally, eating consumes a lot of time. And hear me out guys. So during normal days where I'm not fasting, eating can take anywhere from like 30 to 40 minutes, like from the act of preparing my food to the act of consuming all of that food as well. And this is because when I'm eating, I'm not just eating, I'm watching something on Netflix, like a show on Netflix or something on YouTube or a cricket match or a football match. So this makes this entire process of having a meal much more pleasant and hence I'm taking anywhere from like 30 to 40 minutes per meal. So when I'm having three meals during the day, like breakfast, lunch, and then dinner, um, I can usually spend around two hours um, just on eating during one single day. And when I'm not eating during Ramadan, I actually save those couple of hours. And trust me guys, this makes a massive, massive difference in medical school. Secondly, what exactly is this urgency factor? So when I'm fasting, let's say around 20 plus hours a day, the last five to six hours for me are like the slumping hours. And this is where my energy levels are down. I'm feeling tired and not really in the, mo in the mood for getting work done. And this creates this mental urgency for me where I know that, okay, at around 5 p.m. my energy levels will be down and hence I need to get all my work done before my slumping hours can start. And hence I'm much more likely to cash in on the hours or the time before my slumping hours and this just makes this entire my, my, my day is much more efficient compared to non-Ramadan days. So the first few days of Ramadan are never easy to fast and this is because you haven't really fasted for like 11 months and then all of a sudden you are going to fast for like 18 to 20 plus hours every single day for the next 30 days. And this is not really that easy because your mind and your body is not really used to this new routine. So for me personally, it's about the first three or four days of Ramadan where I'm not really feeling it as my body is not really used to this new routine. However, after that, it gets pretty much easier, I think, because your mind understands that, okay, it's not gonna get any food for the next 16, 18, 20 hours, and hence it starts utilizing your glycogen and fat stores and uh, for, for me personally after like the first four or five four or five days I start feeling more alert more sharp and like more awake I don't really know how to explain this I mean if you have been into intermittent fasting then you will probably understand this feeling of being more alert and more sharp um, after a certain of the first few hours of a fast and to illustrate this point in a much better way I'll give you guys a few examples from my personal life so it's I've taken exams like in medical school and exams during college multiple times while fasting during Ramadan because Ramadan comes around like June to like May June season and that's when most people most students have their exams as well so back in the days when I was in college and the final year the third year of my college as well my final exams were in around June or May I think and I still remember I was fasting during Ramadan and I was a bit confused I thought okay hmm should I fast for my exams or should I just let it go and you know not fast for my exam days and I finally decided to actually do fast on my exam day as well and I managed to perform perfectly fine and th these were like the most important exams in my, my in my entire career because they were going to determine my GPA uh, for medical school and I was able to smash these exams and get a high enough GPA as well. So the point being that for me personally it, ha it has been a matter of increased alertness and increased sharpness um, after like the first 3-4 days of Ramadan. Just as a fun fact, I'm actually fasting right now as well while filming this very video. Having the right nutrition is absolutely essential during Ramadan. And this is because the, most people I know open their fast by having like traditional um, fried food such as samosa, like pakoras and, and all that stuff, which is extremely delicious by the way. <laughs> but still, it's not really that rich when it comes to its energy, energy or nutrition providing value. Instead, what we should be focusing on are complex carbohydrates like oats, um, whole green, green, whole grain, pasta, um, bread, chapati, roti, uh, and all that stuff, like, and of course, vegetables and fruits as well. And this is because complex carbohydrates, they are, they are rich in fiber and hence they are digested much more slowly compared to simple carbohydrates. So complex carbohydrates release their energy like slowly throughout the day. So the right nutrition is absolutely key guys. I cannot stress more on this factor. The last point that really keeps me going during Ramadan is having a look at the bigger picture whenever I'm feeling down or if whenever my energy levels are less or I'm feeling demotivated. And this is because fasting really teaches us endurance, empathy, um, sacrifice, stamina. And all these qualities have to be present in a great physician as well. And Hippocrates actually once said as well, 
he says, wherever the art of medicine is loved, there is also a love of humanity. So once a year, Ramadan really offers me this reset button and like reminds me of all the privileges I have by virtue of having or of being in this profession. So whenever I'm thinking, oh man, fasting is so hard, like no food, no water for 20 plus hours, I actually start and think about the bigger picture and think about all the people in the world who have it much far worse than me and have to basically fast entire lives um no breaks every single day during their entire lives so yeah this makes the process of fasting for 30 days much more doable that's a wrap for today sapiens now these were the things that have really worked out super well for me during ramadan so if you have any tips as well for me uh, or for anybody else then comment down below and let me know how you like to spend your ramadan or what exactly are the factors that keep you going during ramadan i hope you found the video useful and if you did then you might also want to check out this video which will surely add some value to your lives if you haven't subscribed already then please consider doing so I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Peace.